Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. We got some mail. Hey Santee, could you do a video about straw hats in the Old West? Bobby Shaw. Straw hats? I think we can do that. That's right, two thousand dollars. Yeah, two thousand dollars. <laughs> Straw hats have a rich history that dates back to at least the Middle Ages. The region they're made makes use of their grasses or leaves by weaving them into a hat. They are light and depending on the weave can breathe more than felt hats. We southwestern folks make good use of them. Usually broad brims with a string to keep them on when the wind picks up. Clearly, these are warmer weather hats and would not do so well in northern countries during the winter months. Here is a terrific photo depicting their use by the 16th New York at the Savage Station Field Hospital during the Civil War. In the Old West, these hats were mainly used by miners, farmers, and other laborers. Cowboys primarily stuck to the felt hats, but you do see the Mexican influence down in the Southwest with sombreros and other straws. The Chinese workers wore straw hats while helping build the Transcontinental Railroad. I found an interesting Utah newspaper clipping from 1881 showing cash awards for the best made straw hats at a county fair. Ecuadorian made hats were sold to the hopeful prospectors traveling to the California gold rush as they crossed the Isthmus of Panama. This must be my lucky day. Let's go This is stupid. Later on, Teddy Roosevelt would be associated with these, and they would be incorrectly named Panama hats. Panama with the purple hat stand. Women wore straw hats too. Of course, theirs could be anything from a simple prairie bonnet style to an elegantly decorated brimmed hat. Frequently, they would adorn these hats with silk or flowers. Our friend Odessa Red wears one that actually dates back to the 1870s. Some of these would not fully cover the crown of your noggin, but would sit on top of your hair. They could be held on by hat pins or small combs sewn inside the brim. Late in the 19th century, another famous hat arrived on the scene. Straw boaters originally could be seen at sailing and sporting events, but later on became everyday use. Hand it over. These were made with a straw called senet, which allowed for the creation of a stiffer hat. A wide ribbon would complete the picture and this stylish hat became a fad. Their popularity really soared in the early part of the 20th century. These days straw hats are extremely popular. Probably the most common creation is the Guatemalan palm leaf. Companies like Sunbody, Resistol, Atwood, and Stetson make these ready to go for ranchers, farmers, or folks just looking to wear a smart hat that protects them from the sun. They are less expensive, which is popular in the world of rodeo, where hats take a beating. Shaping the brim is rather easy by just wetting it, molding it, then letting the hat dry. Which is what I did to my Stetson palm leaf. It's doing a bang up job of not cooking my cabeza while I walk the dusty western streets in 100 degree weather. So wear them with pride, but don't get rid of your felt hats. You're gonna want those come winter time. Well folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on down the trail.